Hello, I'm Youngblood and I'm great. Good company? Great, fuck. <laughs> keep, keep that in. That's how I like that. Sorry. Hello, I'm young. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. My I, ass. I, I, it's great. It's I, great, right? Great I, company. Great, right, great, 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 great company. Like the Great Wall of China. Great. Okay, fair, fair. Hello, I'm young, but I'm the Great Wall of China. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one more. Hello, I'm young, but I'm great company, I promise. I read that you have trouble sleeping as well. Yeah, complete insomniac. Complete? Yeah, fully. Just like, terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible at sleeping, honestly. Really? I actually get a bit stressed out. It gets to 10 o'clock, sat like watching the telly, watching the box or whatever, and I'm like, oh shit, I've got to go to bed soon. Mm. And I get in bed and I'm like, and then it just like all starts going. And but what like, is it you're thinking about? Because you're overthinking or you're thinking about oh, sleeping yeah, or what is overthinking. it? Overthinking, sometimes I'm just anxious and I don't know why. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes I'm just like stressed about something. Or sometimes I'm just weirdly excited. So I like, get you know, that as well. You know, like Christmas, I was the worst Christmas sleeper. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I'm going to hear my dad like put down a stocking in a minute. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Or whatever. But I remember the first time I didn't really sleep. I was in Brighton. Mm -hmm. We were playing a festival called the Great Escape Festival. And uh, we apparently like when you're in a band and me and me drummer and me guitar player, we literally just lived in a squat in South London. Mm. And we were like, people might see us here tomorrow. So we've really got to nail it. And we just r weirdly, randomly stayed at this dude's house and me and my guitar player were sleeping on a, a sofa. And the thing about my guitar player is he breathes. He's like this, really deeply in bed. He's like, <sighs> and he would do it every like three minutes and it kept me up all night and I haven't slept since Brighton. Honestly, I've not slept <laughs> since Brighton. So every time I go back to Brighton, I'm like, you motherfucker. I hate this place. What year was that? Probably like 2016. Shut up. Honestly. <laughs> so that's why I wear eyeliner. Because it's like if I take it off, you actually see like the 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 weather. The what do you call it? Crambazzled. But you see the crambazzled. <laughs> you see me crambazzled as fuck if it takes this Man, off. I I had this as well. I, I, I just got I got married and leading up to my wedding, the same thing. I had one night where I didn't sleep and then I was like, "Oh, I'm not. I'm not going to sleep again." And then the next night, and the next night, and it's it's a it's a it's a sketchy thing when you get into that mindset where you start to think, "Oh, I got bed coming." Because bed should be a place which you are excited yeah, about, right? Hundred percent. And then it's just like getting out of bed in the morning when I've actually fallen asleep is really hard. But going to bed, it's like you know when you're trying to get up, bed mm -hmm. feels amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like warm and just like yeah. But like when you go to bed, it's like, oh no. But you have so much energy, man. Yeah, too much. So much. Too much. It's great. Yeah, it's funny. Your energy is, dude, I want to say your energy is fantastic. Oh, thank you. It's, yeah. it's like, it, and I'm sure your team must feel the same thing. Is well, that I you, don't know, man. Wait, I run them ragged. What is the difference between Youngblood and Dominic? Fucking hell. That's the question. That is the question, right. And, and how, and, and. I such a you're good, you dude. I listen. Fucking I fucking hell. I like, I gotta pay you for doing me therapy. Do you know what? Fuck, I'm fucking good at this. <laughs> I know you are, man. <laughs> it's like flowing. I think no, like because it's because look, like, you know, for for me, I think we all live like it's people. Someone once said to me, right, that we have like four different personalities. One when we're with our family, one we're with our partner, 100%. one we're with our friends, and one when we're by ourselves. Hundred percent. And, and you. Youngblood and Dominic are obviously the same person, but they're separate. No, One's more fully. volumed up. Hundred percent. Like because it's like I I needed to protect myself. Why? Because I hated myself. I did, I grew up my whole life like feeling waking up with pain in my stomach, hating myself. So I was like, how can I create something that I love and want to be? It's like I almost like created a caricature to become like like a superhero like i don't know like fucking spider-man or some shit in my head i was like i don't just want to sing i don't just want to blah blah blah. i want to create something that i can put on that makes me feel powerful and people can connect to that make them feel powerful it was literally just like i that's why i've always said young blood isn't me i've always said it's each and every one of those people because you come to the gig, you put on the socks, you paint the nails, you get the heart tattoos, you find a community of people that are exactly like you, and you can forget about everything for two hours. And that was why it, what it was. And now what's crazy is like, now it's caught up with me a little bit because you don't think, you don't expect for it to kind of get as big as it is. No, you don't. And then you get into a point where people start to not believe it because 
it's not real. I was like, well, it isn't. It's literally, it was a, it was a, a character that was built to make me feel like I could belong on this planet. I don't know why that makes you feel emotional. It's crazy. It's, yeah, that makes me feel like really emotional yeah, for some reason. It is fucking emotional. Because it's, like, it's really childlike as well, because you're, you're, it's your superhero. 100%. And then the superhero you're, is becoming, you're putting on your cape. 100%, because it's just like, I like felt I am ordinary. I am an ordinary dude who fucking likes a cup of tea with one sugar in it and fucking like uh, is really anxious and doesn't fucking like cinnamon. You know what I mean? But when I'm fucking young blood, I'm like, can walk out in stage in front of 35,000 people and be like, yo, it's fucking going to be all right. And then while I'm telling them that, I'm telling myself that because it never fucking, pain doesn't stop. We all know that. It doesn't fucking end. It just doesn't for every one of us. Not like in a way that's like, every one of us goes through shit. And it's just like, I need, I want that to be by people's side forever. And I think what I've realized is like, going into our next album is like people will leave this community people come and go people outgrow it people like oh it was great when i was 15 but now i don't know anymore and and it's kind of used to worry me but i'm like i'm gonna be here forever so mm. when you want to come back when you want to leave when you want to vibe out when you don't it's cool like i kind of had to really come to terms with that been like every album is a is a personal thing and I think I kind of really went into a thing where I was trying to cater for everybody. And when you're trying to cater for five million great, people, great it's advice. like, fucking hell. You can't hell. do it. You can't do can't it. do it. So I just kind of had to say to myself, like, especially this next album that's coming that I'm making at the minute, Dominic is really bleeding into it. Really? You know what I mean? It's kind of got to the point where I'm like, okay, like... Because you're becoming more your yeah, organic, I, I, authentic yeah, yeah. self. Yeah, I've just kind of, I've be kind of gone on a ma- mental journey where I've learned a lot. I've been kicked, I've been scratched, I've been scarred. I've also been loved and I've also met, I don't know, 200, 300, 400,000 people and heard their stories and kind of realised that, you know what, like, it'll be all right because I have a lot of faith in humanity, even though the world's pretty fucked right now. When I meet these people, mm. I'm like, there's something, there's some fucking hope here. Because cause you're almost then starting to accept yourself and you're going like, I can Strictly. actually lean into Dominic now. Yeah. And just Actually, it's okay. I'm, and, and you're comfortable. But it's a trip having... because it's scary. It's yeah, the most yeah, yeah. scary because I'm like, oh, well, people fell in love with the character. If I ch- like change it or morph it or drop it a little bit, I'm like, fuck, like, well, uh, my biggest fear is abandonment. You know what I mean? From everything. I, hey, snap, you know, padlock, you know one, what I mean? two, three. It's just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't leave me. Don't <laughs> leave no, me. No, please. <laughs> and, um, and, and I think kind of, that's why I, I love Bowie and I turn to Bowie a lot because that was, that was, I think, even though it might not have seemed intentional, Bowie's career was like, whatever, 60 years long. Mm. And he changed every fucking two years. And became something new. And I don't know if that was because he didn't fucking know who he was the whole time. Like, I'm talking about. And he had to put on these, create these superheroes. You know what I mean? It's all a trip. But do you know, do you know, it's it's so funny. The more, when you were that seven-year-old kid, that naivety that you had. Oh my God, it's the even, best thing ever. Because you, you're not worried. You don't have anything to lose. And then when you get to your position now, which is, you're globally famous. Yeah, it's crazy. Your, your albums are you, number one. You 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 know you're you're selling out everywhere. You have so much more to lose. Hundred percent. And then for someone with the fear of abandonment, that pressure is almost so great because you're like, shit. What happens if this now goes? Yeah, it's crazy. And, that, so you're, and the worst almost, shit is like, I used to like your stuff. It's like, oh, <laughs> it's the worst thing ever. It's like I used to like your shit. I'm like, <laughs> it's literally just like. <laughs> blood i'm like oh fuck i'm like what do i say to that like uh i'll make something for you yeah i'm like <laughs> what do you want <laughs> what, do you what do you want what can i give you you want a jazz album sick one two three whatever you know what i mean da, 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 da. Like, uh, literally it's like fucking crazy to do that <laughs> you want a jazz album i'm just like what do you want it's like you, be, you oh shit! You used to be an emo, but now you work in accounts at a fucking law firm. Sick. What do you like? Swing. Okay. You know what I mean? It's fucking mental. And but then like the, 
Then you realize, like, all you got to do is get back the naivety and just be like, I'm fucking doing this. Fuck and do you. Because it's for me, right? Yeah. It's not it, actually, because then you start, when you start doing things for other people, that's when the creativity is ruined because you're not being your true authentic everything, self. Everything. When you start doing something for other people, you're lying. Completely. You know what I mean? It's just literally just like, even if a little bit, 2% lie, the fucking people can smell it. And I think that's why Youngblood broke through in the first place because it was so fucking unhinged. Like, I remember, like, Everyone's like, really? Do you want to do this? We put out parents, and the line is like, like my daddy put a gun to my head, said, if you kiss a boy, I'm going to shoot you dead. So I, um, I tied him up with gaff- gaffer tape, locked him in a shed, then went out to the garden and fucked my best friend. And Interscope, a crazy label, like, you cannot release that. That you cannot release that. You're literally talking about gun violence and tying up your dad in the name of love. And I'm like, yeah. And we put it out, and it was fucking huge. So like two is times platinum. Is it true? It was. A, it was. A, it was a resemblance of an older generation. It was just like it was like every. It put the words in every young queer kid's mouth. It's like you're not literally gonna like do that, but it's like it's what you take the fucking power back. It's what you want to do. Yeah, right? take the power back. It's just like get with it because it's it's gonna happen, and it did. You know what I mean? It was. It was cool, man. It was cool to be a part of a movement around artists like Lil Peep, Mac Miller, Billie Eilish. Mac Miller, man. You know what I mean? Like, a generation, like, when you look back on it, I don't think you can really look at it now because you don't feel like you're a part of something. But it was like the Pistols and the Clash and mm. um, a, 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 a young movement in uh, like across the countries, like Billie and Lil Nas X and Lil Peep and Mac Miller handling America. And then, like we were trying to hold it down over here. You know what I mean? It was cool. It was cool to just kind of have this this shift. Are you quite trusting? Too trusting, actually. Really? Yeah, I get bitten a lot. Because I like, I I really fuck with people. You know In what, what I mean? way? I just love meeting people. Mm. Honestly, I, I'm, I get, a, I, I just like, I, I'll have a conversation with anyone. The other day, right, me taxi driver, I brought him into the studio. Honestly. <laughs> I got a taxi driver from the station. I was like, do you want to come in? Because he started talking about you too. I was like, come and have a cup of tea. And they was there for six hours. What? Yeah, in Leeds. Just there for six hours. <laughs> so I'm talking about you two and everything. And that came in the studio and my band's like, what the fuck? Why are you doing this? What? Why is this like old Leeds United fan sat down in the studio? I'm like, nice guy in here. I love that because... There, there's something you because I see this like with all your fans that you have right because your your fans are so dedicated to you and and I see it you know I see it in you know Louis through documentary I see it when you talk about it on social media or when, when you, you know in your music you're so obsessed with your fans and because we I, I honestly think it's a you it's a British thing for yeah some no it really is it, it, but, but there's a different thing but also in a British thing there's something like when people are so dedicated and wanting to know people whether it's like getting the taxi driver out people want to think oh there's another alternative to that oh, there, there's something more to oh is he doing that just because oh he wants to look like he's one of the people and stuff like that and it's negative but actually with you it's not you generally just want you just like these people and want to connect with them. I just love meeting people I, I think like I, I think it's quite a northern thing as well to like say hello to everyone you meet I remember first moving down to London I was on the tube I'm like how you doing alright and someone's like fuck off I'm like oh like you know what I mean I was quite naive I was like me just come down to London at 15 like how you doing mate alright and everyone's like what the fuck are you talking to me for you know what I mean um, but I always loved people and I always kind of it, it, when I grew up I, I always spent a lot of time in my imagination because I felt quite lonely where I was from because I just looked like this and it wasn't really like, uh, I don't know, it wasn't really accepted where I was from. So it was a bit rough. This so, is Doncaster. Yeah, Doncaster. So I really wanted to meet people. I just loved hearing people's stories from like whatever. And I loved music and I loved talking to people. I just wanted to, I think like, again, like talking about my sleep pattern, I don't like having quiet quiet in my head. I, I, like... I'm really bright person, but then it kind of like can turn dark quite quickly. So I like to meet people because I don't know. I love fi- like vibing off people's energy, mm. and then um, I don't know. I, I think people do find it quite a lot. Me quite a lot and disingenuous. You know what I mean? I think people find me quite a lot, and I think that's why a lot of people. Um, I'm a little bit like Marmite. Me, you know what I mean? People will absolutely love it or hate it, and I think. If you're gonna like my music, you've got to kind of like 
mm. me and I'm quite a lot to deal with sometimes, you know what I mean? Do you find that tricky though? Because look, we just met just now and I think we're, we're similar in lots of ways relating myself to Youngblood straight away. I, we, are it. Similar, no, <laughs> we are similar. No, we are. We are but, like madheads. Yeah, yeah we just like, like I want to talk about ADHD and things like that and just the energy, but I'm sensitive. I'm so sensitive. So too. sensitive, right? And so that must be tricky because in my life, I, I'm i desperate for people to love me and 100%. want me and accept me and all those things, but that's impossible to do. Yeah, it's horrible, and isn't it? And yours is even more so because you're a musician. It's You really want people to like you, but of course you're going to have people who do think you're mama. But how do you deal with that? Because that's a tricky it's thing. Too. I, I've, I really get affected by things. You know what I mean? I'm really like... I, I'm I call it an empath, I think, right? I'm mm. really empathetic or whatever you call it. I'm, I feel empathy a lot. I'm like, if I see someone's down in the room, I want to be like, yo, and like try and bring them up because I feel, I kind of take on everyone's thing, energy. energy in the room. I think that's kind of why like, the uh, really the most, probably one of the most fundamental reasons why I think we've got to where we got to because I was, re I was really good at, vibing with people you know what i mean i was really good at being like oh you don't seem all right what's going on or oh you seem really happy i, I would love to talk about that because i'm having a rubbish day today and i think it's hard because it it's like i've got thicker skin and i've kind of like more so that now than ever like i'm hitting 27 next and i'm kind of like oh i'm starting to kind of not care as much anymore but i've said i've not cared for years and it's been a complete front and it's been a complete and utter lie because it's just like, whoa, and and the internet can make up the truth. Like everything you read on the internet is true. Yeah, of course it is. You know what I mean? And then you like, you don't want to stoop to a level where you got to defend yourself. But like, when people li re leave shit, you read it. You know that. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, well, that sucks. Or like one of your favorite like people's like, oh, that fucking young blood, what a wanker. And you're like, oh, fuck. All right, fair. <laughs> I'm down. I mean, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. I'm loud and a bit mental, but I'm like, oh, shit. Fair. I know exactly. You just want to meet everyone and be like, yo. Yeah. Honestly. I'm really nice. Honestly. <laughs> like, bro, I, I, can I tell you some shit, though? I've yeah. in, been in pubs and I've actively, um, actively sought out people who have, like, I can see someone, like, laughing at me in a pub. And I've actively tried to meet them. And as a mental... you want to gain... You yeah, wanna I want to... So yeah. basically, there was a stag do in... We were in Lisbon, right? And we were playing a gig in Lisbon. And we had a day off. Yeah. And I was sat in a square and there was a stag do at the side of me. It's usually like lads who... I don't know if they're into me, you know what I mean? Because I'm into like the makeup and like whatever. And I'm like, I can hear them. So I go sit down. And I'm like, what's happening, lads? And they're all just like... Oh! Like full on shit themselves. And I was like, they could have battered me, man. They were like 10 tons. And I'm just like kid in makeup and I sit down next to him you were there remember and uh, I was just like what's happening lads and we just started talking and we just got, kept getting a bit more drunk and you know what I'm saying there's nothing more funny than like a fucking really pissed up accountant after like 10 10 drinks who's like completely hates you but then he starts turning around, listen mate I thought you're a fucking wanker to be honest but like um my girlfriend really likes you, and you're actually all right, you know. And I'm like, I, I was know. like, you know exactly. I, know exactly. So I, I really thought you were just a fucking wanker, you know. And I'm just like, I'm, it's and always I'm just, my girlfriend, or it's always the guy, yeah. my sister thinks. Yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> and he's like looking at me, and I'm kind of just like, just you have to just take that shit. And you're like, oh, oh, fucking well, sick man. And then we became. It's funny though that you, you that so you just take we just take it. It's funny. Just I was, take, oh, that's all right. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, good that you think cheers, I'm not a wanker. Man. Cheers, man. And then I was like, well, all right, lads. Well, fucking, I hope you have a great night tonight. We're playing tomorrow night. Do you want to come? And they were like, really? I was like, yeah, man. And we got them tickets to it. And they fucking loved it, didn't they? They loved the show. And like, they text Adam, my manager, and were like, that was fucking sick. And I was just like, I actively go out of my way to be like, all right. If, so, if I notice someone is kind of trying to hate on it or trying to blah, blah, blah. It's because they don't understand it. Like, Youngblood has always just been about love and, like, bringing people together. And mm. I know I look a bit fucking like a rascal or like I don't fucking shower, but I do. I, re I really smell really good. The, you know um, what I mean? How long did... Because it's a... It's a 
Do you know, it's, it's brave of you to say that because it's very, you know, 27 in the least patronizing way is, is still really young. And for you to be able to admit that you um, used to say that you didn't care and now be able to say, look, I did care. Yeah, completely. I did care about all those things, but I pretended that I didn't. It took me way longer to admit that, not only to myself, but to like other people. But I just think like, I just think you can't, if you, if you tell the truth and just completely where you are on your sleeve, like, and you get through after like, 20 years or some shit like you're still gonna you'll be all right i think but can i ask a personal question as well because it's one of these things where from what i can gauge from like and where i said our similarities are is that we're easily led yeah. we really want to impress we're desperate to reach a certain place at a young age because we want to get validation from our parents or we're searching for something we've got this fear of abandonment so for for me that led me when I did this reality show right, which was just like not a great idea for lots of reasons. I liked it. it, it yeah, it would do. It was good. It was a great show. I grew up on that shit. I was yeah, like, but it was a great show. Yeah, but, but I took a. I mean, it's not. It's not my interview. I go into. I took a shortcut into an industry that I wanted to be into, and then when you take a shortcut, you have a long way around. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. No, I feel you. I feel you. But I. I got some sort of fame and nowhere near the fame that you had, but it led me down a path, which is like, I started drinking way too much yeah, and yeah, started yeah. getting, you know, into that sort of area of things, which wasn't a good situation. You have this in crazy fame. Like, how did you control yourself or didn't you control yourself? Or do you, have you learned to control yourself now? Yes. Now it was food. Really? I, I really don't like, I really not like my body for a long time. I really kind of would go on like weird food binges, which I've actually never talked about on a thing before, which is weird. Uh, but I've kind of just kind of came to terms with that. Like, would just kind of like just go like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, don't really want to say it, but so like I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, I go around it. You know, I'll be I mean? real with you right now. Okay, so when I was when I was uh, 16, 17 years old, I, I was a rugby player. Yeah, I loved it more than anything. It's everything that I wanted to do. 17 years old, I was on tour in Italy. I had this dream of I was going to do it. And I did my ACL ligament. Fair, but I, I've never I've done ACL too. I did my ACL, couldn't play rugby again. and But I was still eating the same diet yeah, that yeah. I was when I was playing rugby. My mum used to say to me, you look really stocky. I was like, well, I look great, whatever. I had It was back in the day when there was just photos that you developed. She took a, a photo of me on holiday, whatever. I got them developed. And I saw what I looked like and I suddenly saw... My, I, yeah. was, I was like stocky, yeah. I was overweight. Yeah. And I had immediate shame. And I never had that before. And then for a period, I had, I had a, a strange... Weird thing, yeah. Weird thing with... Eat, and and I, d I never wanted to admit that. Ever. It's so weird. I agree. I've, I, it's like when I look back on it, I drink. I like beer. I, I'm a, like, you know what I mean? I always have done. I, like, but it was, the f it was the food thing and what I would do after I ate the food that was like, oh. I, but you don't... You, re you watch the documentaries and you think the blah, blah, blah. And it's you, not me. Uh, yeah, it's never going to be me. And then it kind of hits you. And it's just like, I've I've never excessively drunk. I've never excessively done drugs. I've mm. just not been into it. You know what I mean? Like, because I've got ADHD. I've like I've kind of been, a, you know what I mean? I've, I've not been into it. I mean, me, me dad's mum out of the whole family stuff died of alcoholism. Wow. We basically lost the business. We lost the house. And uh, she, she kind of just couldn't. Like two, uh, eighteen months later, she died, which was crazy. I was so it kind of scared me off. I was like, "No, I've I've seen my grandma literally deteriorate." So I was like, "That's not my story." I'm gonna kind of part of young blood is like there is an answer, and it's like not been, you, you know, what I mean, not been alone and like come together, find friends. You don't need to turn to these things because I know it gets rough, and I know depression's hard, and I know anxiety's hard, and I know the world is. But if you turn to your friends online, that's all I want to do with young blood. Like turn to these people here in a chat, you can talk about it all from a real perspective because people have problems with therapy sometimes. I go to therapy, I think it's great, but f people don't like it. So like, I just wanted to be like, yo, find each other. And um, But why do you become nervous about talking about the food thing? Why? Cause I, I don't know, because I've not done it yet. I've not kind of like, it's like even this morning, I was like putting on an outfit, I'm like, I don't like, I've really not liked my body for some weird reason. I have a, it's a weird, weird thing that I've, so many people have their own. Like, you know what I mean? Know, dude, it's a yeah. weird, it is a weird, weird vibe. Yeah, because it, it's that self-hatred towards yourself. You just don't feel like you look good enough. Right? Yeah, I don't know what the vibe And is. some people would look at you and say, what a good looking, charming, amazing guy. And they, they would, they would. So be, weird. Yeah, yeah, it'd be crazy. But it's, it's so funny. Like, it's, it's like, we'll do whole shoots that'll just never come out. Because I'm like, I hate my body. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? 
and I'm just like, no, it's not coming out, and I'll freak out and shit. There's like so, in there's so many videos that just never come out because I'm like, oh, I don't like the way I look there. I don't like the. Do you know? You know what I mean? It's like, man, I but, applaud but, you but for then, being vulnerable. But then, there's, well also, done, but then man. there's also that thing about like, I just think if you wear your art on your sleeve, as I was saying earlier, like, I just want to do that because I think like if if I do that, then it's like I'm. I don't know how, like, people are going to love it or not, but at least when it kind of, the curtain falls at the end of the, my fucking life, I'm like, I was really true about everything and I was really, like, honest about everything with everyone because I think the worst thing that you can be called as an entertainer is a liar or uh, as an artist is a liar and um, I've been called that and I fucking hate it and uh, I'm, I'm not. Do you find it tricky getting close to people? And, and let me just explain this. So, so like... um. You, you like to connect with everyone, but do you stop yourself getting really close to people because that becomes too intimate and then you're scared of people finding out? At, you you almost think in yourself, maybe I'm not good enough, so I don't want them to find out exactly who I am. So you almost spread yourself too thin it, across it, lots of people. It's kind of funny. I get really close to people really quick, yeah. but then don't necessarily let them like really in. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, Why? Why do you stop them? I don't know. It's just kind of like because I think... Um, I think what, like, my kind of uh, crew friendship group is really tight. Like, it's it's the fucking best thing in the world with us because I've just done this with me mates. You know what I mean? Like, starting from the beginning, like, we just looked into an iPhone and just did it with me friends. Like, everything we make is, like, we, when we sh get 2,000 kids to fucking washington square in new york mm. my best mate is like sat negotiating with the nypd being like oh, honestly it'll be fine i promise or whatever it's just us so i think I, I i really feel like i need to protect that and kind of in the past i've let people into it that have um really uh kind of skewed the balance you know what i mean or let their opinion in i really kind of I've, in the past, I've listened to people too much. I think it's because of a deep rooted insecurity that I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? Or like, I'm like, fucking hell, how did I get here to to do that? And and uh, I kind of listen to too many people sometimes, but then I figure it out real quick and I snap back into it. But kind of weird like that. I like let, if I meet someone, I'm like, muse out on them hard. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, oh, whoa, I like that vibe for a little bit and I like that vibe and then, Kind of like, especially my like last album cycle, a lot of people, a lot of cooks got into the the part, you know what I mean? And I was like, oh, whoa. Our first album, we were like 17. Man, and that's so young. 17, we were making it, we released it about 18 or 19, right? Mm -hmm. You're just doing what you want. No one cared in the UK. No one wanted to sign us. No one wanted to write about us. No one, no, no one even wanted to come see us play. It was like, oh, shit. Like, we're, we were literally like about to just stop. And uh, and we went to America, and then whatever it started happening. And but no, but just tell, what what started happening? It was like a film. We went to America. We snuck in, basically with guitar cases. Been like, what? Why are you were uh, bringing those in, sir? I'm like, uh, just like want to write on the hotel or whatever. I was like, completely like lied, and we got like all our drum kit and whatever, trying to get into America because me manager had set up a meeting in. in in New York, it was like the last resort, basically. Like the UK didn't want to have anything to do with it. We were kind of big, weirdly, in the Netherlands. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was kind of just like I was like, "Sick, all right. If this fails, I'll just move to the Netherlands, become like, like young blood von, young von blood." You know what I mean? Or something. And then uh, how niche? It, yeah, it was, I mean, bro, they're always first, man. Yeah. The Dutch don't give a fuck. They're yeah. cool as fuck. They um, are cool. Yeah, they are. Cool. Great style as yeah, well. Everything. Don't give a shit, bro. Like, if you go to a Dutch festival, people are fucking wasted at like 11 a.m. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Honestly, they're like, yeah, man, let's fucking go. <laughs> Crazy. And um, and we just fucking basically were either, it was two options. Nail America or this really small meeting. But in my head, I'm like, we're in New York. Wow, it's all going to happen. Or go back and become the Netherlands' biggest rock star. You know what I'm saying? That was the choice, right? We get to New York. I take this guy with me called Emmett Power, and he's Irish, right? And he's like, this is a movie. It's fucking mental, right? I, mean, I love so it. Really give me every if detail. If it's too long, we can cut it no, out. But anyway. Give me every right. detail. I want everything. So Emmett Power is this Irish guy who is literally probably like, he's moved from a farm 
to London and, and basically got a job with me management, right? And he can literally, like, wangle you into anywhere. I'm telling you, like, we could go to, uh, I don't know, the craziest party in Mayfair and we stink a damp because we're living in a squat and he'll get us in. You know what I mean? He'll be like, pretend we're like Pete Dockett's sixth cousin once removed and like we're in. You know what I mean? Or whatever. So we get to New York. I'm writing in a recording studio inside a Universal building because that's where one producer we manage, manager knew 10 years ago was like going to give me a shot. And he, and he pretends to be my drummer because when you go into Universal, you get these like passes, mm. right? You get these like 12 hour passes mm. that's got a stop sign on it that after 12 hours, it says stop and you're not allowed in anymore because you've got to show in past security at the desk. And he pretends to be my drummer rides the elevator up and down all day. He's like, Roy, you heard of this young blood kid? Yeah, he's blowing up in England. He's going to be the next fucking Smith, I'm telling you. To every A&R. And you know what the music industry is like? Everyone starts fucking talking because it's all bollocks though. Like, I've got 6,000 followers on Instagram. I'm writing in a fucking studio and everyone starts talking and chatting shit, being like, oh yeah, I'm keep... Have you heard this young blood kid? I've heard that name somewhere. Then it reaches the West Coast. The, like, the, the East Coast starts talking to the West Coast. My manager starts getting calls from like A&Rs in like fucking LA being like, yo, uh, we want to fly him down for a showcase. So we got to New York, taking this meeting with it, like this mediocre meeting. And then three days later in Los Angeles, we have a showcase at like fucking school night because a, a radio DJ had heard about us and wants to book us on his night. We get to the school night. There's a, we're in the fucking toilets because there's no dressing room. I mean, like, the the men's loo, like, the audience coming in, like, the A&R's coming in having a piss. He's like, oh, I'm coming to see you. And I'm like, all right, lads. You know what I mean? Just sat in the fucking bog, just, like, stressed out. Nervous as fuck. So I'm like, Eminem, lose yourself shit. Like, this is it. Throw up in the toilet. My guitar player's Scottish. He's like, oh, it's a fucking man. We'll just go out there and fucking do it. And I'm like, I'm just like, all right, fuck it. Go outside. Play a gig. Probably, like, the craziest gig of our fucking career right do the thing and then the back the man's toilet after it is like the fucking 70s everyone's trying to get back there being like yo we'll fucking give you a record deal and we're in the mat like the dude's loo just like what the fuck is going on and then two days later we signed a record deal in america and they wouldn't let me leave until i signed it to interscope records it was like fucking mental and then that is nuts and then nothing happened for six months because it's like don't matter if you get signed and everyone talk so funny like that's funny how you re you 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 tell everything you've been you going for you going for you going for you going fucking, for, and then suddenly yeah. you get it and it's like it's like yeah cool nothing all right. changes it's like, it's just like all right cool there's some money how much did they give you when they're saying uh, that? we we start we we went to America with sixty quid we came back with eight hundred grand and that's but that's all to give you and you're beholden to it a lot of people think you get signed to a record label and then they're just fucking it's it's done. It's literally not. It's like, right, there's your money. You got to show some results or we'll drop you. And it's literally just like, oh, fuck. But what we did is like, I, I just basically like went around the whole building that week, shook everyone's hand and was like, listen, I want to fucking do anything. I'll do anything. Like, what? Like, tell me, like, I'll fucking do it. I have an idea. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to like promote it. This is what I want to talk about in my music. I want to talk about because like the UK really wouldn't sign us because I was like really political. And like, mm. everyone's like, that's never. I remember someone being like, that's never going to get played on Radio 1. Someone said that to me because I was like being political. Some manager, I remember, I'm not going to out them, but they were like, that's never going to get played on Radio 1. It's too dangerous. You know what I mean? But they didn't understand what was happening with the, in a, within a generation. My generation yeah. in the wake of Brexit were like, would have been more vocal and been, been a lot more. And it's like everything when that happens, art reflects whatever's going on in the world. And I was like, I want to talk about this. I want to blah, blah, blah. And that's partly why I signed Interscope because Interscope had Eminem and Lady Gaga and Dr. Dre and NWA. They were famous mm. for their Marilyn Manson before he was a cunt. Like, they had, you know what I mean? It was literally just like... Famous for famous standing for out, for shouting out. anyone who wanted to make, like, do something crazy. And the, the, the one person I met was like, I made really good friends with the international department. I was like, please, just send me all over the world. Like, just, I, I was like, I don't care about videos. I don't care because that money is basically like, here you go. That's just it. We're giving you that. And if it works, great. We're going to take 80% of every hundred quid you earn until you pay it back. Or, or you're going to, it's a bad investment. So that's what they do for you. And then it's literally just like, I just made friends with the international department. I was like, please, can we use the money to just send me around the world? Just so I can like 
go and play some gigs, go and meet some people, like do anything, and, and that's how Youngblood started. Because you could feel it. You you knew if you had the money to go around the world, you could connect with these people. I just had to, I just was like, if you put me in a, in a room with yeah. uh, with 50 people, like there might be five kids there who who need, who I need to meet, and that was it. Then that's how Youngblood kind of started. Are you good at taking compliments? No. <laughs> I kind of do this. Oh, yeah, cheers, man. Uh, so, or I'll but be like, you're good at taking criticism, which is strange, right? You, 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 fuck, I'm great at it. I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, fuck. But I take that on board, yeah. but the comments, are you fucking kidding me? It's fully just like, oh, I like you, like someone, but I love what you're wearing. I'm like, oh, yeah, sick. You too. Don't talk to me about it. You look better than me. You know what I mean? I'll be like, someone's like, oh, I like your shoes. I'm like, oh, sick, man. So I like yours too. Man, Take I, it back, I need you know to, I, mean? I need to give you compliments now because you really you need you are I, like I, we so we recorded lots of these episodes right and this is you we are so excited for you to come in here because we were so excited to have you on the show that we want to release this is our first one that we want to release because not only the artist that you are but the individual that you are the what you stand for and how you help communities you really need to know that about you. dude don't you're 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 it's as you say you're a sick individual oh uh, thank you you man. really so are, are you, man yeah but you man. you but you but the more you you should really know that about yourself. Thank you. Yeah, look, even now, <laughs> <laughs> I get freaked out. I'm like, ah, thanks. Because your music, your energy, your love of people touches people around the world. Yeah, that is unbelievable. You're doing things that no one else in this world is doing. Yeah, it's, it's cool. It's, it's freaking fucking, amazing, it man. Amazing. It's 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 beautiful to be a part of. And as I said, like, I think as we kind of, like, I can feel you, like, you're such a good presenter. You're, like, drawing the interview to an end. I'm like, you're, like, literally just, like, going, just, like. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, I've got to have another talk, two hours with you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I fucking talk all day, whatever, like, editor's problem, in it. But I think what what's exciting is, like, after everything we've built, we're going to launch this festival because, because it's, like, I blood want a, a blood fest because I want it. It's a world. It's literally a world that. I want to be like, we dreamt of a world. I dreamt of creating something and now I'm literally going to make it. It's going to be like Youngblood World and like, I wanted to create something that was like cheap because festivals are so expensive. I wanted to create something that was all about like community and friendship. We've had this mad idea like yesterday. I'm going to have a make a friend tent that's going to be a tent with nothing in it. That If you're in that tent, you want someone to approach you and be like, hi, I'm Dom. Where are you from? You know what I mean? I was like, because I love meeting people, so I was like, here's a make a friend tent. We're taking the Holy Arms pub in Camden to the site, and we're just going to make it just like, I wanted somewhere like... Wow, that's that amazing. People can truly be themselves. Like, for one day a year, you can be who you are, and with the things with gigs is you don't know when someone's going to come back. But the thing about this, it's going to be a constant, so you know that at least one day in 2025, 20, 2024, 20, 2026, 20, 2027, 20, 2028, 20, or however long it runs for, you can go back and like, be who you are and bring your parents and bring you like I want it to be like a vibe for everyone because if, if your parents are struggling with who you are just like why don't you come here and like you'll see this m a mass of 30,000 people who are just like me and maybe get it a little bit more imagine the stories from the tent people getting married that's, people going that's what I'm saying bro that's what I want I want people to be like we got married in the make a friend tent or like I found my best mate of like 20 years in the make a friend tent or like I don't know, you know what I mean? We like we started a business together. We started a clothing line together. We started a thing like when did you first have this idea for Bloodfest? When Le was it? Uh probably last year. I have pretty radical ideas. It's why I don't And then sleep. suddenly you want to do it. I was literally just like we're going to do it and I'm like I'm going to we're, we're literally doing it. It's like <laughs> I, I don't want to do I call me management I'm like cancel the tours. We're not doing another tour. We're going to bring everyone to one place and we're going to make it magic and we're going to make it like insane. And everyone's like ah! <laughs> you're insane yeah everyone's like you you are mad and then it's kind of like it's be, it's become harder because getting artists is the hardest thing in the world because because they're busy because, because people are busy like we've got an idea to have an icon slot which basically like an older artist who's an icon will come and play the 730 slot so like everything that kind of is we're paying homage to what the community has kind of come from like who are you hoping for so I spoke to the cure which was mental, but Robert can't do it. Look at the nods, rather than the nods. I, spoke, I spoke to the cure, but he can't do it this year. So I'm trying to get him for 25. Touch wood, Robert. Um, and then I spoke wow. to uh, I spoke to Blondie, which was sick, but she's uh, not touring. Um, it's so, amazing you have these connections. Oh, well, which is mental. Yeah, I've got an email from Robert Smith, which is mad. 
And like, I want Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins, but everyone's on tour. To be honest, I approached it a little bit late. <laughs> um, but like, what was sick is I, I love a punk band called The Damned. Do you know The Damned? No. You don't know The Damned. Maybe like, this was a selfish one for me. This is the first year. The reason why I got the white streak in my hair is because of this ba- punk band called The Damned. So I'm going to have them be the first icon slot at seven o'clock. But I got artists like Little Yachty. Um, I got artists like, new artists like Lola Young, who are like um, Jasmine Bean. It's going to be cool, man. It's going to be like new gen. Um, and sick. you're just building it. This is the first year you're the just The first year. I was it. just like, and I wanted it to really be about the community. Because I was like, if The Cure came the first year, it might take a little bit of the thunder away, to be honest. I'd be a bit like, I'd be like, fuck my set. I'm going to see Robert <laughs> Smith. Woo! At the front, it's like, Youngblood didn't show up for his set. He's watching The Cure. Because the, you do these, when you do these amazing, like, pop-up festivals, people go wild. Yeah, they go mental. I, 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 like, I've seen, what is the one where, you, the, that, the famous one you had that you were standing uh, on, like, a truck? You were standing on... Brazil. The, yeah, man. That was... That was mental. How many people were there? I would say 1,500. <laughs> Which was crazy. It was it was mental. It's like Latin America was mad. I have never seen my security guard scared. My security guard's like hardest cunt you've ever met. I'm talking like on that tour, he got a tattoo on the back of his head, like a black heart on the back of his head, like and didn't flinch. He was laughing like craziest. And I have never seen him go. We gotta go. I'm like we turn. I was like I'm at my house right. I mean Ar- we're going to Argentina for a festival. Yeah. And I leave. I'm leaving my house. And I'm like, you know what? I've had an idea. And everyone's like, oh, shit. Here we go again. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> we should play a free gig tomorrow for the kids who couldn't afford the festival. And everyone's like, fucking hell. All right. So we get on the phone to the Argentinian label. And I'm like, how many tickets do you think we could do realistically? And everyone's like, let's be safe. Let's go with 500. I'm like, all right, cool. Sick. That'd be cool. Before I'm at Heathrow Airport, I put on my story. Here's the location. I land at eight in the morning. Here's the location. Sorry, I burped. Sorry, it's coffee. <laughs> Lol. Here's the location. Meet me there for a free show. On a plane. 12 hours. Don't know what the fuck's happening. Land. Holy fucking shit. There's a thousand kids outside the venue there. And apparently, Kev, my security guard's had a call. Being like, there's 1,500 kids outside the, at the airport. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? We've never been here before. Get to the airport scramble through the fucking airport. I'm like, this is fucking mental. Just like, literally just like... I'm grabbing you. Like, literally just like trying to move through. And I look, but I love it because I'm like, ah, give me a cuddle. Yeah. And everyone's like, fuck, because I just sprinted. And everyone's like, fucking hell. And there's like the police there and shit. Get to the thing, get in a van, go to the hotel, wash me winky because I've been on a fucking flight for 12 hours. <laughs> so I've got to, honestly, I really like to smell nice. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> vibing. And then um, get in a van, there's about four... Four or five thousand kids outside this venue, but they've only allowed because it's an outdoor venue and it's like kind of gated, so they only let four, four or five hundred people inside the venue. So there's five thousand people outside this gate, which is like raw time fences, so you can see through it. And then we're playing in this place, and halfway through the gig, they start to break down the gate. Like I'm talking like metal bars being broken open. Fucking like storm the castle shit. And my security guard, like we have this thing because I really, on on gigs, I think in COVID's wake, a lot of young people didn't go to gigs. So they're not used to being shoved around. And our gigs get pretty like on the floor, get pretty jumpy. So a lot of the front row, like if you were kind of like 12 in COVID, you're 15, 16, 17 now. And then it goes back to like 50 at the seats, but like the front rows, like whatever. And there's then there's the lads who are like 22, 23, 24, like, been quite aggressive in the middle so i always have my security guard have an eye on security and we have this thing it's like there's a problem someone's fainted but i'm dealing with it and then it's like you got to stop the show really so So that's so one arm up so one arm up's like i'll be like because he's like he's sick man you can't you can like spot him a mile off he's like one arm up um I've got a problem. Someone's passed out, but I'm dealing with it. Keep the show going. Because I'm just on stage, like, singing, and I'll just clock him if he's like that. And then if two arms up, he's like, you got to stop the show, walk off stage, you've got an issue, like someone's had a seizure or someone's, like, hurt himself, so someone's fainted, and we've got to clear the people. Um, So not only did he do this, he's like, he's like, got to fucking go. we got to fucking go. And I've never seen him frightened. Like, normally he's, like, really calm, being like, <laughs> he's, like, toured with Green Day and Oasis and, like, seen it all. You know what I mean? And he's fully just like, we, uh, but I, I could, he's like, we have to go. And I'm just kind of like, yeah, man, yeah. Let's put one more song. He's like, 
we have to fucking go. And I'm like, oh, shit. So we get off stage. They put us into this little fucking port cabin, which is fucking roasting. I've taken my pants off because I'm so hot. It's fucking Argentina in summer. So I'm just kind of in my underwear, just like in my fucking creepers, like fucking like sweaty, like fucking hell, what's happening? What's happening? And then they find the port cabin and everyone's like, and I'm just egging. I'm like, yo, come, <laughs> here, come in here, come in here. Signing whatever. And my management's like, Adam's like getting fucking mad at me. He's like, fucking hell. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just fucking talking to people. And then like, they start to come there. Then we get out, get in a van, chase us down the road. And then they get on motorbikes <laughs> and they're on fucking <laughs> mopeds. Like hey! <laughs> through the fucking van window. I'm like, what the fuck? Like oh, Latin America. It's and you've mad. never seen anything like it. You've never felt love like it. It's just like, whoa. It's like, holy shit. It, it's fucking amazing. Oh, man. Firstly, I do want to say that Bloodfest was on the 11th of August as well. On the 11th of August. Oh, you're yeah. a legend for that. Yeah. 100%. We're going to leave all the links in the description oh, below. So legend, if you want to go and check it out, get tickets, go and do it. It'll be Don't freaking miss it. Go and get tickets to Bloodfest because it's going to be insane. And then you could be like, I went to the first ever yeah, it's, Bloodfest it's when it's going mad. for years. You got to come. Be, man, I, sw- I, I, I swear to you, God. Yeah, it'll be so fun, man. I swear to God I'll be there. It's going to be insane. Positive. But dude, I do want to, before we get into the, um, and it's a Milton Keynes. Milton, Milton Keynes, Keynes Bowl. bowl. Melbourne Kings Bowl. Which is crazy. That's where like, I saw Green Day and like there's a famous gig of Bowie there. So it's like an iconic venue. I so heard that you like you got expelled for mooning a teacher. Pulled and... a mooning a teacher, yeah. <laughs> Not great. Miss Hamill, maths teacher, 65-year-old woman. Not proud of it. But everyone was like, go on, Dom, go on, Dom, go on, Dom, go on, Dom. I was like, nah, man, I can't. I can't. Never was like, go on, fucking do it. I was like, all right, and fuck it. Not, it wasn't just like a thing. It was like knocked on the window, took my ass out and pressed it against the window. And then... Uh, and then and I remember being in chemistry and, and a fucking uh, uh, deputy head knocks on the door I was like Harrison oh no he didn't even say my name he was like knocks on the door I was like you know what you've done come with me he didn't even say my name I was like oh, fuck walked into the office and this is the thing with me I'm a bit naughty but I'm people either loved me or hated me my mm. whole life like my history teacher loved me my drama teacher loved me my maths teacher hated me because you have that charm because i have the thing or the whatever yeah. i was like i had the i had the kind of like uh, all right fucking that thing always because i i think i was playing young blood before i even fucking knew what it was to kind of like yeah. like be in my imagination i said i grew up in my imagination yes yeah, so like you're playing that. never face reality so i was like always fucking like happy or whatever and then uh, the deputy head takes me into his office. I really fancied his daughter, actually. And his daughter fancied me, so it wasn't, wasn't great. So he's sat there, and he's like, do you want to tell me what you've done? And I'm just like, I can't, you know, and you just can't stop laughing. And then he starts to laugh, and he's trying to be like, we've got to suspend you. I'm like, sir, you're laughing. Why are you suspending me? Like, you're laughing. It's like a bit of fun. I didn't really mean to do it. And he's like... And then he got angry. He's like, she's a 65-year-old woman. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and, it, and he's like, he's like, do you know if you did this in public, you'd be arrested? I was like, yeah. I was like, fair. And then it kind of dawned on me. Walked out to the thing, and I had a Sony Ericsson flip phone. And I, could, I felt it ringing. I was like, it's me, mum. Fuck. Didn't pick it up. Wrong again. Didn't pick it up. Wrong again. I was like, fuck. Picked up the phone. It was like, she was a 65-year-old woman. I've just had the fucking school on the phone. I'll fucking cut you wait till your dad finds out. Fuck him. And I, then I went home and my dad kind of found it. I went to work with my dad for three days. <laughs> my dad was like, come on then. Because I feel like that's... Because you're always breaking these rules, right? You're, you're kind of like this sort of rebel in a way. Yeah, it was just it was just like my maths teacher didn't like me. It was like whatever. And I just was like, I couldn't, I, but I fucking loved history. I loved history and I loved music and I loved drama. And like, me, me music teacher was sick. Her name was Miss McElinda. And she always used to find me skiving I maths. how you name them. It's so great. Skiving maths in the fucking piano room. And I'd be like, oh, Miss, don't tell. And she'd be like, didn't see anything. I want to ask this quickly, just last thing, because, um, you know, you had the, you've had these hard times, really hard times, and you're so honest and vulnerable about it. You know, you talk about, you know, your your single hatred, I think it is, yeah. which is about sexual abuse yeah, from, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, a, from, a from a doctor, doctor yeah. when you were seven years old. Seven years old. Which is insane. Crazy. And you talk about that, you know, you've been open about your mental health and the fact that you, you know, you thought about suicide. Yeah. And I think you sort of attempted it. 100%. You know, what do you say to the kids out there who look up to you, who love you, who 
see those struggles that you're going through and maybe they're experiencing because the world is tough at the moment. Yeah. What do you say to them to keep going, to keep pushing through, to not go down that road? I think that I think the thing about it is this whole community has been about that. Like it, it's been about fighting back and finding it within yourself to fight back. Like I literally look down the camera and like, if you're going through anything like that, it will get better. It just will. If you actually give it a chance to. There's like the thing about the only reason why I wanted to bring this together is because there is fucking light. There is so much light in every one of us. No matter how irrelevant or how judged or how small you feel. I've felt tiny my whole life. You know what I'm saying? And then like I turned to Youngblood before anyone knew what it was. And all it's about with this is it's about community. And if you are out there and feeling like that, no matter like the biggest thing what I, I always laugh about is a lot of people say like oh i can't be a young blood fan i don't look like that i don't look like it. it's like that is that is so wrong because like i just look like this because i want to look like this if you want to look like whatever that's the point of young blood you know what i mean it's it's got spikes on and it's got eyeliner and it's got a safety pin in its ear but that's just me if you want to like wear a chicken suit wear a chicken suit or you want to come and like you know what i mean like lyle and scott shirt or you want to come in like i don't know like a <laughs> Marks and Spencer's blouse or whatever. You know what I mean? Whatever you want to do. do like, that's the point about it. And I think like it's the, just a community to belong and it's got soundtrack for the music and you can come and be in Youngblood even if you don't want to listen to the music or you can... Mm. It's kind of just like... it's. I just wanted to build a, mo a, a like a, a community more than And show ever. it gets better, right? And show it gets better and just show that like you, like you don't have to go... You don't have to do it alone. Like you might meet someone in the street tomorrow that will change your whole trajectory of your life, but you're looking down. So look look up. And that's the whole point of young but it's like that's why I want to do a make a friend turn. Man, I, I that advice, don't look down, look up. Yeah, fully so man. Important. It's just like literally, if you are looking down on the ground, you are not seeing the person opposite you that's literally just like, yo, I feel like you too. Mm. But I, I I looked up ten minutes ago. So look, look up because you just missed me. You know what I mean? It's just like, that's the vibe, in my opinion. We like to end on eight questions. Are you ready for Love this? it. Is it quick fire round? Quick fire. You can make it long. It's totally up to you. I'm down. Okay, what's a saying or phrase that always makes you smile or cheers you up? Oh, fucking hell. A saying or phrase. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that up, didn't I? I like that. What's the best compliment anyone's ever given you? Um. Oh, wow. Uh, um fucking you're a good cook i'm like wow sick what are you cooking though uh fucking cocker van <laughs> <laughs> or like steak and chips or something what scares you most about yourself uh um me head at one in the morning <laughs> <laughs> when you need to sleep yeah when was the last time you cried and why uh when was the last time I cried? Uh, fucking hell. Probably like three days ago, sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> What's something you can't let go of? Um, Skittles. Great. Sour ones, the green ones. Fucking great. Beautiful. Man. What's something that you'd be embarrassed for people to know you like or want? Oh, uh, Justin Bieber. Oh, man. Fucking love the beef. I love man. Love the beef. His his first movie was the greatest. Fucking love him. <laughs> when that, that purpose album came out, I was like, wow. <laughs> Honestly, I even loved him in school. Everyone's like, fucking Justin Bieber. It's for girls, I'm like, no, <laughs> you don't know Justin. <laughs> fucking get it. <laughs> but you don't know Justin like I do. Fucking watching that documentary in purple, I was like, whoa, <laughs> legend. What turns you off? Turns me. What turns me off? Oh fucking hell. Um. Bad smells, man. Fucking hate bad smells. My house is like, my house is a den of candles. <laughs> Honestly. It's like, it's like a fire hazard. It's, it's a <laughs> full on. Everyone's like, yo, this is not great. <laughs> fucking like, it's like, it's a bit like a perfume shop. Like each room's got a different vibe and then it like accumulates in the hall. And I was like, fucking hell. What turns you on? Turns me on. Um, good smells. <laughs> Rock hard. No, I'm joking. <laughs> what do you like most about yourself? Oh uh, fuck! Um, um, uh, me, uh, me, uh, energy. Yeah, it's great. It's I think. Great. 
It's Even great, though it's man. a fucking nightmare. It's not, dude. You embrace that. It's fucking great. Uh, two bonus ones. Favorite swear word? Fuck. <laughs> that was good. Or con. <laughs> I know. You've seen Olivia Coleman. It's like, oh, cunt. It's a beautiful word. I'm like, fucking legend. I feel you. Honestly, I feel you. You go, Coleman. Okay, last question from me. That kid. Yes. With his imagination. Yes. Feeling alone. Yes. Would he be proud? Yeah, I think he would. I hope so. Of course he would. Yeah, fucking hell. I'm not going to get heady about it. Yeah. Give fucking it sick, Go, man. Yeah, I'm in a rock and roll band. It's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Yay! David. That was so sick, man. You're...